welcome and thank you for joining this session on Build vs. Buy, how to approach embedded analytics. As the warm welcome mentioned, my name is Alex Birch and I'm a Looker customer engineer. So the topic of Build vs. Buy is a very common one and it applies very broadly across industries. So let's think about the automobile industry, for example, just to set some context here. Cars are made from hundreds of different components, most of which are not actually produced by the company assembling and selling those cars. For example, audio systems are purchased from various suppliers and the automaker creates higher level trim packages with premium audio systems to increase the price point of the basic vehicle. So when thinking about this, you know, it would make very little sense for an automaker to spend time and take resources away from their core business to build even a low-end audio system. They likely don't have the specialized expertise in building high-end audio systems internally and would likely not be able to create a premium product that customers would be willing to pay for. This same concept applies to building analytics into your products that you are building. So before we go any further, I think it's important to acknowledge the current state. We are at a point where your customers expect all products to include some sort of analytic capabilities. Not including them would basically be like a car manufacturer, not including even base level speakers in their newer vehicles. So with the understanding that you have to include some baseline analytic capabilities, and also that you need to do more than the bare minimum in order to drive additional revenue, let's talk more about the build versus buy decision and the areas you should be considering. And similar to the various trim levels we see in cars, we'll be talking about how you can build a good, better, best strategy for your products and maximize your monetization potential. So let's start with the technical aspects um, of including analytic capabilities in your products. We'll talk about the risk associated with it, flexibility and future proofing and innovation. And so the risk may not be immediately obvious when you think about analytics from purely a UI or UX perspective. That is the visible part of this work that most of our customers focus on when deciding whether to build their own capabilities or buy from a vendor. However, the risk of taking on this work in-house becomes more evident when you look below the surface and consider all of the aspects of delivering analytic capabilities that you may not have thought about or considered yet. So really the complex technology powering what you see is the hardest and most important part of building a data product. Some questions to ask are, do you have the expertise in-house to address things like permissioning, authentication, compliance, performance, APIs, integrations, and more? And further along, what happens if you miss a critical piece and the product that your customers are paying you for becomes unstable, unreliable, or unavailable. And partnering with a third party vendor who is already thinking about and delivering on these areas really allows you to focus all of your efforts and resources on the actual products itself and innovating on it further. So let's think about future proofing here for a minute. It's very likely that your product will evolve over time as will the needs of your customers who will likely demand more and more sophisticated analytic capabilities within your products. With that said, your integration and data facing or client facing products need to be flexible and able to adjust to new changes like new underlying databases being deployed in a different architecture or infrastructure, uh, introducing newer capabilities, new integrations and more. And so who is actually going to do all of this work and how will those valuable resources be deployed? So one option is you could deploy those resources to build and maintain lower value basic analytic capabilities. But on the other hand, you could use them strategically to integrate higher value capabilities provided by an analytics platform vendor and actually maximize your revenue potential, meet evolving customer needs and start to differentiate your products from your competitors. So let's shift gears a little bit now and, and talk about the economic considerations of the buy, buy versus build conversation 
when it comes to adding analytic capabilities in your products. And the categories we're gonna to touch on today are time to market, time to value, and opportunity costs. So the time to market value proposition shouldn't come as a surprise now that we understand more about what is under the covers when it comes to building analytic capabilities into products and applications. The simple fact is that you will be able to introduce new analytic capabilities into your offerings far faster than building yourself because you won't be spending time upfront building out the foundational components that already come with a vendor provided platform. So instead of focusing on building the plumbing and wiring, you can do is lean on a vendor for that and dedicate your resources to designing and building the house. If you start from scratch, the efforts and initial investment are focused on building the technical foundation and not so much on maximizing the growth and strategically addressing market opportunities. One other point to consider is if you have limited funds to invest, would you rather spend that on the plumbing or on building the house and innovating further? And kind of in line with the time to market, if you can bring analytic capabilities to market faster in your products, it stands to reason that you can begin to monetize in far less time than compared to building your own or building on your own. This could even help with pre-sales with more effective and compelling demos of your product, lead generation and trials, marketing material creation, and much more. So this framework here is a, a fairly common monetization framework, but it really allows you to strategize on ways to directly monetize your product offerings. And one example being creating tiers into those offerings. Again, going back to that good, better, best, or the range of trim packages that might come with a new car. So a good tier might offer some basic reporting, aggregated data for the past 12 months of history, Whereas on the further scale, your best offering might allow users to perform their own ad hoc analysis, look at four years worth of raw historical data and schedule reports, set alerts, uh, and embrace more enhanced functionality. All of these are directly monetizable and that can actually serve as new revenue streams or increased revenue streams around your data facing products. And as we've discussed already, these, cap these are capabilities that require specific expertise and a purpose-built platform that, can, that you can integrate into your own products. We have a ton of partners who are monetizing their data in different ways. And here are two examples of tiered offerings that are based on different levels of functionality and data access that could be flexib flexibly delivered with Looker's features. And Although we do have two clear examples here, there is no one size fits all approach to monetizing your data, but the flexibility of a platform like Looker allows you to evaluate different options and innovate on them over time as you expand your product uh, suite. And so what about opportunity costs? We kind of touched on this already with the plumbing and wiring analogy versus building the house. But if you spend time working on the low end of the spectrum and then deploy your resource to build and maintain analytic capabilities in your products, instead of differentiating on higher value analytic capabilities, you are likely losing ground. You're also limiting the number of products that can be enhanced with analytics, whereas competitors might be building more. Uh, and according to Gartner, 45% of technology leaders are increasing their investment in BI and or data analytics solutions. So finally, let's think about some of the ecosystem aspects of the build versus buy, buy decision, including vendor communities, partner networks, and customer references. So going at it alone and trying to build analytic capabilities into your products means just that. You are working on your own. You will not have access to vendor communities where you can access the collective knowledge of their developers, product owners, and more to share their experiences and gain insights. You won't have access to the networks of partners with expertise and analytic capabilities who could augment your own internal development teams and bring real world experience and expertise 
to help you with your own product development efforts. And you also won't have access to actual customers who can speak their experience with, to their experience with a particular vendor, their products and learnings they have acquired as they've taken the same journey you are planning on embarking on. So really there is a massive opportunity in front of you to use analytics to improve your products, attract and retain customers, and generate new revenue streams for your business. So engage with others who have done this and who have created truly innovative analytics applications for their customers and engage with us to learn how we can partner together on this journey. And don't think of analytics as a checkbox. Use it as a way to differentiate and bring innovation to your own products now. So just thinking about the what is possible, the art of the possible, this is an example from Fox. And this is a completely custom application that they built on our platform. You know, this really doesn't look at all like the traditional BI that we know and are familiar with. It is a truly highly customized application that goes far beyond embedding basic charts and graphs into a portal. And now not every company may have the same level of resourcing as a Fox. But the great news is by partnering with a vendor and focusing resources on building products, companies of all sizes can create these types of experiences and applications for their customers. Smaller companies are enabled to accomplish amazing things that deeply resourced companies can do too, and reap the same benefits associated with including high value analytic capabilities into their products. So just one call to action, you know, engage with our embedded experts, think big with the art of the possible and not just charts into your application. You know, talk through what are things your peers and competitors are doing that you can use as art of the possible examples in an unconstrained way. And remember, going alone doesn't make technical, economic or ecosystem sense. So whenever you're ready, engage with our experts to explore the possibilities and potential for your organization.